Hi there, I'm Shannon and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how I'm planning to afford my dream. If you've watched any of the previous videos specifically about my author journey, you'll know that I blew my previous website away. I renamed my channel here on YouTube and I am chasing a dream, a dream to become a children's writer, specifically for middle grade fiction. But I'm not a fool. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I know that it's going to take time for my dream to take off. I know that I'm probably not whether I'm successful or not remains to be seen. But even if I am successful on my own terms, doesn't mean I'm going to be able to live off that income. So how am I planning to afford this dream? That's what we're going to talk about today. First and foremost, I have started by knowing exactly what I need. What are the non-negotiables? What are the things that have to get paid that are stable every single month? <clears throat> my mortgage, my healthcare costs, utilities. No, knowing my fixed expenses is the first step because if I don't know what I need, then I don't know what I need in order to bring in to meet those needs. Next, I'm trying, I'm striving to be honest about those other expenses, expenses that might not be fixed but are nice to have that help me live a fun, fulfilling life. I like to eat out. I do not like to cook. I'll admit it. I hate cooking. I hate cleaning up. Um, I care for our special needs son. I'm his primary caregiver. So at the end of the day, the very last thing I want to do is dirty up a kitchen, cook for everybody, and then have to clean afterwards. Oh, no, 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 no. DoorDash has become a bit of a habit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have to look at putting myself on a limit. I'm not going to cut out DoorDash or eating out entirely because really, honestly, truly, those are important for my mental health. Um, that's better than therapy, to be honest with you. That's how I buy myself some, some free time, some freedom. But I need to be realistic about how much money should I set aside for that when I'm looking at how am I realistically going to be living, live off my dream. Next, I've set what I hope and believe is a reasonable timeline for attaining my dream and hopefully securing a reasonable amount of income from it. I'm giving myself, and I'm being public about this right now, I would like to be making some income off it within the next two years. So by the end of 2025. Um, I can stretch into 2026 if, if necessary, but that's my goal. I would like to be making some kind of income, hopefully half of what I'm, at least half of what I'm making now currently working. I do work part-time. Part I am a professional writer. I work part-time as a curriculum writer. Um, but that's not necessarily creative. <laughs> it, it's very, um, uh, what, I don't know, how would you put that? Um, expository writing. It's explaining text. It's not necessarily creative or an imaginative. So that's really what I'm stretching myself to try and do now is very imaginative writing. And um, so I would like to be able to make half, at least half of what I'm currently making as a curriculum writer on my fiction work. But again, I'm giving myself, I'm not expecting to do that, you know, tomorrow or even at the end of this year. Hopefully by the end of two to three years when I have a catalog, a back catalog of books that I'm currently working on right now. Next, I'm striving to keep a positive and proper perspective about my current job. My current job, while it's not necessarily my dream job right now, it is allowing me, it is affording me the opportunity to chase after my dream. It is meeting my bills. Hey, look, I can stress out about not having money, or income, not having income coming in, or I can stress about my job, and I get to pick about pick those one of those two things. Well, not being able to meet my needs or my family's needs, yeah, that would be more stressful than juggling a job that I already know, that I know that I'm really good at, and that it honestly is affording me the opportunity to go ahead and chase after the the new goals that I have. So when I keep it in that perspective, it helps me to actually gain gratitude for the job, the positions that I have right now, even though they may not be completely what I want to do. Next, I am actively seeking and striving to gain 
multiple streams of income. Now, this is not a financial channel <laughs> at all in any way, shape, or form. But I do think it's important to recognize that we live in a very unstable world and it's important not to put all your eggs in one basket. And so I would rather have a ton of tiny little streams of income coming in so that if one of those streams dries up, I'm not left high and dry. And so what are those different streams of income? Well, I am I used to only sell my books on Amazon through KDP. I am going to start trying to go wide, using wide distribution, um, selling on Barnes & Noble, um, Kobo, Apple Books, um, all that good stuff. I'm also here on YouTube. I've committed and I'm trying to maintain a um, editorial a content schedule of one video a week. And I'm actually enjoying it. I was worried that um, this would become stressful. But, oh gosh, as horrible as this might sound, I feel like this is a wonderful opportunity to connect to people. Hopefully people who are like-minded or driven by their own dreams or may struggle with their mental health. I have been working from home for the past 15 years, no, 16 years now, because I had to, to take care of my disabled son. And that has left me in a very lonely place. It's lonely to be cooped up at home for working, for taking care of your kid. I rarely get out. No wonder I like to go out to eat. <laughs> you would never meet anyone more friendly with you know, serving staff than I am because boy, the chance to chat with somebody, boy, I take every chance I can get. So what I'm saying is this opportunity to make videos for YouTube and to respond to your comments and to read your comments feels like the community that I so desperately need and honestly have probably needed for many, many years now. My village of support is no, I can't think of anybody. Yeah, even even my parents, my husband's parents, they've never been willing to watch Mark. They find his uh, special needs to be incredibly overwhelming. So I respect that, but that also meant that I've had no respite. And so I, I don't get out much. <laughs> so my videos and chatting with you is an opportunity to connect to other people, even if it is me just staring at a camera. And that's why your comments and your interactions with me mean so much personally. So I'm actively seeking other streams of income, YouTube being one of them. I'm not monetized yet. I would love to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year. November of last year is when I started. And so I'm hoping to get to 1,000 subscribers by November. We'll see if how that goes. Again, trying to be very reasonable because there's nothing worse than setting up a goal and then falling woefully short. I'd rather be realistic and work towards something at a pace that um, is doable. So I'm hoping that a year is doable. So that's what I am doing in order to afford my dream. I'm being realistic and being completely transparent and honest about what my needs are. What, what are my fixed current expenses? What are the bills that I have to pay? How can I change the bills that aren't fixed or the expenses that do go out that aren't necessarily tied to things like home, uh, housing, utilities, and being realistic about my schedule, um, not expecting things to happen overnight. I don't want to, I don't want to dash my dream or embrace failure, um, too soon because maybe the dream is attainable. I might just need more time to do it. And lastly, keeping my current job jobs, I should say, in the proper perspective. In fact, I just recently took a gig that I really, really did not want to do. And I did it so that I could pour that money into redoing my own office space to set my dream off on the right foot. And I I didn't enjoy the work, but I'm so grateful I did it because it afforded me a wonderful work environment. And that's actually the video that I did last week, um, a couple weeks ago, about transforming my workspace. And Lastly, striving and seeking and working towards multiple streams of income. And I have an Etsy shop. If you haven't checked that out, I encourage you to check that out. I only sell printables. And printables are near and dear to my heart because you get them right away. And it can help you instigate change right away. And that's why I chose to set up an Etsy shop because I was so um, helped by printables that help printed material that I could put to use right away to help myself 
24 seven. There's, there's something powerful in that, not putting off change, but getting to work right away. And so there you have it. Those are the five different ways that I am working to afford my dream. And I hope some of those tips might help you as you either seek to make more of what you already have or two, take a chance, take a risk and go after something you really, really want. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye.